95.1, New York City Pop and R&B. Um, my guy, Omari Hardwick, is here today with me hey, with Entourage. Yeah, you know what I mean? Look, look at the Entourage. Hi, team Omari. I can't believe what power happened? is over. Oh, man. Well, it's not over yet, right? You know the craziest we thing We still have is, another season. We got another season. The craziest thing is Angie and I, uh, it was a Rondé's birthday. The so, other night, yes, and it was Idris's party, Met Gala, Met Gala after, after party. party, and Angie said, "Oh, I'm gonna see you next week." And I was like, "Yep," and so here we are. But I knew something that Angie didn't know, which was that the show was coming to an end, and I didn't tell you when I hugged you. I was like, oh, "Why? Shit. Why didn't you tell me? You didn't trust me." <laughs> you, this... you know, you would have preceded fifty and putting that news out. No, I would never do right. that. I, one thing I am good is that with, with private information, <laughs> I'm like a vault. I know how to keep quiet yeah, information. That's that Capricorn shit. Bro. Wait a minute, before we talk about power, can we talk about what a hell of a party Idris threw? Yo, that was crazy. Wasn't <laughs> After it? the Met Gala, I was like, "This is a party." No, it was a for real party. It was like D, D, D nice, D nice, Donatella Versace, Chris Rock, crazy, wasn't it? Gab, you, I mean, just everybody. It was good. It, it was that a good was vibe. Yeah. Did you go to the actual Met Gala too? Yeah, you I went did. to the Met Gala. That's right, you did. Yeah. Do you like those things? Do you go to that those That was times? my first time ever Oh, it was your going. first time. Yeah. Was you it... been? Have you been? I've never been. It was interesting. What happened? Definitely had the most color that they've ever had, apparently. Oh, is that right? And color and I feel like that's outfits, been building like, up. Yeah, I'm sure. People of color, I feel like that's been building up. What happens in there that you so, can say? Do you have to sign like some type of non-disclosure? Yeah, right, an NDA. Do they give blood? Like, what happens? The is first... it Illuminati in yeah, there? No, Are they in it, there? It feels like that a little bit. The first thing that you kind of go through that I didn't expect was you kind of get to that moment where you go, oh, my publicist can't walk the carpet with me. Oh. We're so used to the publicist being Yeah, they're you. like, yo, this is a different type of party. Yeah, so <laughs> if you kind of, I guess people stay in the middle edge if they can't, if they don't do the interview part right. well right. without your publicist. Right. But once you get to the top, I saw Ava DuVernay when I got to the top. Obviously, we had done I Will Follow in Middle of Nowhere together. But once you're there, then you just start walking the halls of the Met. Till you get to the cocktail reality of an hour long cocktail party. Right. And then you go to the dinner. How's the food at the dinner? You know. Yeah. Right. It's very hard to feed a large group, don't you find? I do find that. <laughs> Even weddings. Cher, Cher, I might, never Cher the food. might have ate the best. I mean, she performed that night. Cher probably ate really oh, well. Oh, because she probably got separate food. She probably got separate food. And my table, the table was so good. You know, as we had, it was Dapper Dan's table. Oh, So we, had, we had, you know, obviously he's a monument uh -huh. in, in and of himself, but we had, uh, the the incredible Beth Ann Hardison, mm -hmm, love her, who equals that, and yeah. then um, we had Bevy Smith, love one Bevy, of your, one of your colleagues. Shout out to Bevy, and uh -huh. then uh, colleagues as in, in one of your peers who uh -huh. does what you do. And then we had Regina Hall, we had uh, Ashley Graham. Regina Hall's fun. French Montana. That's a good table. Twenty One Savage. Wow. We had a really dope table. That's a great table. And Dap dressed everybody. Dap dressed all of us. Ashley is fun too. Ashley's fun. She's a dope girl. We had a really dope time. I so Dapper's okay. Yeah, yeah. Dapper's I don't know the yeah. whole Gucci thing. I've been worried yeah, about him. Yeah. He, he, I, I would like, love for you to talk to him. You know what? Why don't we book him that on the show? That would be dope for you to talk to him. I just feel like he's such a, he's such an icon, and everybody was so happy when this Gucci thing happened for yeah, him. And yeah. then it was so unfortunate that Gucci went through what they went through. Yeah. And it was still fresh. He didn't even get to right. really enjoy the exactly. beginning of his run. Right. Because it's only been like three, I think, 2015. Yeah. They sort of partnered with him, so... It's not a very long, you know what I mean? It's for as long, long as he's been rocking, like, I, I don't know. He would be a dope interview for you. Man. Yeah, I would Especially, love to talk yeah, to him. Just to sit down and talk about where he sees us going. Yeah. The so generation he, younger. The fact that he brought 21 Savage there, I thought it was super dope. As a 74-year-old cat. So you were his guest at his So we table. were all his guests. Got it. He had his table and he got to pick. <laughs> and I think Gucci's team made sure that he had the table enough where he could pick all the eight people that were at his table. Got which it. I thought was just super cool. And he dressed you. He dressed me. And what did you think of the outfit when it came? I loved it. Okay, good. So it was a it was a team. <laughs> Would you effort. be able to say I, I don't if you if he brought you something yeah, yeah. you didn't want? No, it? Oh. I kept. He said that he he kind of called me out. I guess as a compliment in terms of uh, I was sort of doing this documentary from the deck to the mat. You know, I'm from Decatur, Georgia. So uh -huh. he basically um, said, you know, when Omari comes in, and then you you're a Capricorn, so you get it. He was like, he's super definitive. He knows what he wants. He knows what he doesn't want. That's a fun experience. So it, was cool. it was fun. And then I got a party with you. Yeah, and and anyway, so that night you already knew that power was going away. I did, and and we knew. Did you we were... just find out, or you no, known that's what for I'm a saying. while? I knew for a minute. Oh, I knew. Like Courtney told me, Fifty and Courtney will give me some information that that other people in the show don't have. So right. I knew probably since July of that of last. Summer. How do they break that to you, and how do you take it? It was it was for me. It was like, ooh, 
and I've I've been fortunate enough to work, as you know, in the hiatus periods. I've done yes, movies, a lot of as you know, around is always on me about and, the music. So uh-huh. I've been doing a lot of music for a long time now. But um, that which Fifty was even involved in my music. Uh-huh. Uh, Tori and I've done songs together. Michael Rainey, who's you a did great a stand up. You did a one man show. I did a you did a right. show. So we realized that as much as I was working in the off season in terms of doing movies and all of that. Uh-huh we start to come to the conclusion that your family base, what becomes your job, those are moonlighting gigs. And as much as you pour into them, whether it's, you know, Nobody's Fool or or Sorry to Bother You or the movie with Megan, uh, Boy, Girl, A Dream, mm-hmm. you know, Shot Caller, which a lot of people really loved and it kind of yeah. slipped between the cracks. The job job is still power. And I'm not able to do a lot of those jobs had I not been on power playing yeah, Ghost. And so once you break the news to me that this is coming to an end, it still took me like, kind of a moment to deal with that. I've been living with this guy, Angie, for so long. Yes. As complex as Omari is, the character was equally as complex. Yeah. So when Courtney wrote it, and Curtis and Courtney and, and Stars trusted me with rocking out with it, that shit was hard once they said, all right, it's coming to an end. I bet. Yeah, it was hard. How are you now? Are you kind of comfortable with it? Oh, yeah, I'm terms good, because it? it's been a, a while for me. You know what I mean? Uh-huh. I've known for, so I, I, I played him like it was my last season, if it were analogous to sports. I'm oh. like, let me leave everything on the court. Every every scene, every play, wow. let it be the same. Every episode, let me put, let me try to make this director's episode better than the next or the preceding. Like, right. I tried to just leave everything there for the people because we had sh- such an incredible fan base. Did you shoot the whole season already? It's already we in the can? We have one more episode left. Oh, wow. So it's mostly in the can. We're, we're, finishing, we're finishing an episode and then we got one more left. I know people are going to drop. It's crazy. <laughs> I know this is going to be. I, can I make predictions? You don't have to say anything. No, go ahead. I think Dre's going to go. For sure. And don't be trying to read my face while you're making these predictions. Dre, right? I'm easy. I think. Don't be. Brother? I think <laughs> I think the son. Jen, I'm going to look to the right. I'm just giving Ann's profile so profile. she can't really see my. Actually, we did a poll. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> These are the people that people want to see go most. <laughs> These are the people most hated in the cast there is of a Power. Poll. There There's is a, a poll. poll. We okay. did it. A lot, of people, a lot of people voted also. Okay. Tariq is the favorite to go. He is number one. Huh? He is number one. Y- your boy, they want him gone. And I tried to the put, streets. I, Evan, I put my foot in his ass, and I've tried, right? It's just, but the streets want the, the streets, streets want him. Yeah, I feel you. Gone. Yeah. Number two is Dre. Why do they hate Dre so much? I mean, he's a bad guy, but they hate Dre. Because I think Dre still. You remember that that the death of the daughter and oh, just yeah. still. Oh yeah. Oh yes. Still you're right. You're right. You're right. Yeah. That's, I'm sorry. It's just that Rotimi was here recently, and his song here? is so good. Yes, yeah, good. Yeah, I good. kind of blocked what Dre yeah, was doing, yeah, but yeah. you're absolutely right. His song right. is very good. Isn't his song so it's a good? Song. I you, love. Well, you see, I did a post, right? I danced and mm-hmm. got my boogie onto the song. It's like he's really... doing the music that I wanted him to do for yeah. a long time now. I'm like, this is you, bro. Separate yourself from the from your peers that you would go into an audition against if it was a musical audition. Right. And he's separating himself. He's remembering like these are my roots. Yeah. I'm a Niger boy who was raised in Jersey. Like do that. So, so I, lo- I love what he's found. They don't like Dre, though. They want him gone. They want him gone. Okay. You know who's right behind Dre? Who that? Angela. Alex, your stomach keeps look, growling. Look, look, look. I'm like. Is that you responding to, or is that an emotional <laughs> response? I'm for you. <laughs> oh, are you? They want Angela gone. They want Angela gone. She's number three. She's number three. Okay. Why nobody wants you gone? Because then the show's over. Yeah. I, you know what it is, Ang? I think. And Fifty spoke about we did his we did the podcast today the Poetics podcast. We're gonna talk about that. And and Fifty was on today. He was phenomenal. He wow! Oh my god, he was phenomenal. So what what he said and he's always said this. He said, "Oh, think about it. What's your character's body count?" And I said, "Well, I gotta go back and really." He said, "Come on, you yeah, got a photograph." He killed his memory. son. He can't talk about nobody okay, else. Cool. So then right. if Ann says that, then on the on the game of chess, then you're allowed to move forward by going. Come on, fifty. Your character killed his son. True. Nothing. But then he would say that. the body count of of that which Ghost has on his belt would make it where he's really the bad guy. And I always say, but fifty, you guys made it, man. Where Ghost was at least a dreamer who didn't want that. He wanted to break good from bad. A B. He was loving. The dude was loving. <laughs> yeah. He was a loving bad guy who was a yeah. killer. And if he wasn't, then nobody has an opportunity to really root for anybody in the show yeah. if Ghost is also not necessarily loving. So when you think about it, I'm always open to people going, but yo, I want Ghost to die too. I would go, absolutely. Well, let's, let's really break it down now. Episode one, the pilot episode, Ange, we could have lost the lead character in episode one. 
Tommy doesn't have the same body count as Ghost ultimately once the right. subsequent episodes start to show up. Kanan doesn't have the same body count as Ghost. But Ghost being this guy who is dreaming and the going good from bad and Naturi playing the character the that really is Lady pe- Macbeth, she really is the killer who wants me to continue to sell drugs. If you think about it, the character, I made the show really special when I sat there and read that in the pilot episode when Courtney gave it to me, I'm like, oh, they're trying to kill Ghost in the first two episodes. That's different. Yeah. Nobody was really trying to kill Tony Soprano in the first two episodes. Right. <laughs> but Ghost, they were trying to, yeah. they were coming for Ghost Head in the first couple episodes. And it, and for me, it made it way more of a realistic bathtub of dirt for me to get in as an actor and sink my teeth into and get yeah. my hands dirty and I thought this is real Shakespeare meets the diaspora of New York yeah. where New York is the biggest character on the show I'm yeah, so honored to have to have played it to play ghost and to have been a part of power like I'm, I'm forever you could pinch me forever isn't it so weird that the same year power is ending empire is ending is empire in the two? this is the final season they just announced it right it's the final season of empire Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones is ending. All about power. Same template. The thematic reality of all three shows. Power. Acquisition of power, loss of power, desire uh, for power. Same thing. All the power's going away. All the power's going away, Andrew. <laughs> what happens next? Andrew, who are you going to talk to now? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. I just started watching Game of Thrones, and now it's over. Have you had any of them in? Game of Thrones? Yeah. No, you're not understanding. I just started watching. I just binge watched oh. season two. Like I'm just got to season three. I just got on board and it's over. That movie, that movie, uh, shot caller Rick Roman Wall, incredible director. He put Nikolai Costa Valda uh-huh. and myself in that movie, and so it was like the conversations were about Game of Thrones and about power. Are you a fan? Do you on watch? The set. We were fans of each other. Uh. Especially first two seasons. I yeah. was all over Game of Thrones, but after that, once you start playing Ghost, I'm like, I can't really. You don't have time. I need to focus. Yeah. So what about the other show, the spinoff show, the power spinoff shows? I don't know. Isn't don't, it like prequel? The prequel to me is um really, really the Kanan. obvious one. Right. Right. Because don't you need to see what Ghost and Tommy did with Breeze? We killed Breeze. Why did we kill Breeze? How did we get to where we got? But Kanan they, taught us the game. But are you part of that? No, it would have to be 20-year-old uses or, oh. I don't know, 17-year-old So uses. this hasn't been worked out? Yet. Nah, that's what's cool. It's all loosey goosey, but it's definite. But it's happening. Are you part of it? Is what I'm asking you, Amari. I want to be, be part of everything. Okay. Because I help signature that thing, right? I help brand not only Power and but the the network. Uh-huh. I'm so proud of what we did as a as a show for stars. Yeah. You know, shout outs to my castmates and incredible crew and the crew. We worked so hard. We mm-hmm. it was crazy. 19 yeah. hours to 14 hours in the snow. We worked through all conditions. Whereas you agree that New York was not only the the biggest cast member of the show, but in reality it came with the weather that New York comes with. Like yeah. this shit was brick. We <laughs> were in it. Yeah. Yeah, so you would have to be you're not answering Thanks, my question Ange. though. You didn't answer my question, but Thanks, you would Ange. have to be in the I love prequel. you, Angie. I love you, baby. I'm just saying. But shout out to like Angie God. Martinez for always making sure that she rocks for her fellow Capricorn <laughs> same day birthmate. Thank you, Angie. Exactly. Um, but it wouldn't be like people haven't done that before. Isn't even the Sopranos prequel, I think, is yeah, not. Yeah, it's happening. I know it's happening. They made a movie. It's a movie sort of thing. But they're doing it. Um, but Tony's not there. I mean, he passed. God bless. No, so. God bless. His son, yeah. So I'm just saying, it's not like they haven't done prequels and haven't included the original no, cast. No, 50 I'm just said saying. it. 50 said we will. I think Courtney is definitely in talks about spinoffs. Good. I think 50 is in those similar talks Good. in his own right. So, You mean 50? Fofty. <laughs> I asked him about it today. I said, "Fifty, fifty, what's fifty?" He said, "Hey, that's something. That's a lot, you know." It's know. really good. It's so it, funny. I mean, he's hilarious. He's so funny. That's that new shit. So here's that's the new thing: new. I love that's Fifty, but I always get to, I, he, Fifty's the type of person. He told I, me to say. He said, "What did he say to say to Ange?" He said, "Tell Ange I love her. I'll see her soon when I'm ready to sell some shit." Fine, Fifty. I need to sell some shit. Fine, Fifty. He's coming to see you. When okay, he's good. Some shit. So, but Fifty's the type of person that you like him so much, but you'd be afraid to be too close to him because <laughs> one day your face could wind up on Instagram and yeah, it could some, go bad. Somebody brought up to me. They said, "Yo, oh, add Omari Hardwick official. I hope you don't owe him money." Yeah, that would be terrible. And you know what I realized, Ange? What? And nobody's heard this story, and I was gonna give it to him on the podcast, but I'm gonna give it to you. Okay. Because I know you equally as long as I've known him. <laughs> Fifty Cent, aka for me. Jackson Five, because I think Jackson Five, Jackson Five, excuse me, embodies all that I know him to be. Mm-hmm. Everybody else can call him what monikers or nomenclature they have for him. That's fine. I call him Jackson Five. 
He loaned me one summer, <gasps> like 20 Gs. He said, I can't have my number one effed up. So he loaned me 20,000. And Jay, as you know, a fellow Capricorn, right? So we sat there, pragmatic, logical. You know how we are. We don't fuck Jay's with money like your that. Your wife. Right? Uh -huh. So then, so, 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 so Jay and I was like, nah, you can't, like, you gotta pay. And I'm like, I'm paying them back. And like, but you can't. And, and, and brown people need to know this. And you, you know this, Angie. Brown people need, all of us need to remember that when we uh, loan money, that you can't give back the same amount of money that was loaned to you. You have to Because that. that person's money could have been making money that you. Especially if it's 50 cents money. You, you nailed it. Right. So <laughs> I made sure I gave him that back with interest. Very smart. And then the next summer he gave me money. I hadn't re-upped yet. Didn't have my new contract. But, so we were living in this New York life, but as you know, bi-coastal. So I was trying to figure out life. Figured like, yo, I can't have my investment effed up. And he looks at life like that. Mm -hmm. He was developing a friendship and a brotherhood with me, but wow. I was also his investment. Mm -hmm. So then he gave me another 20000 and then I paid that back now with more with interest, interest, with more interest. Got it. And so when people say that, I think it's so dope. But I love now that I can say it because you can have actual Instagram people who listen to 50, follow 50 or listen to Omari, follow Omari and go, yo, so you did borrow money from him. Yeah, but I paid him back. Thank God. And I ain't trying to borrow a million dollars from him. No, ever. <laughs> ever. <laughs> he, he doesn't play with his money, but he also doesn't play with his investment. So yeah. he was real big on throwing an arm around me, figuratively speaking. And making that 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 That's arm. That's so up. nice to hear because people He's always dope, are quick. Man. People are always quick to tell the bad fifty stories, but I know there are a he lot gave, of good fifty stories. He gave and that it's shit very so nice quick. To hear one. He gave it. He put when when Tyler Perry loaned me money, he did it in a brown paper bag. That Negro's from New Orleans, right, Louisiana. Um, and I thought it was super hood and super cool. And he's pretty good financially now, right? This Gave me money, Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry, you're a, you're a struggling actor I was, at, at the time. time yeah. Absolutely. So then fifty. Loans me twenty thousand dollars two summers, and he put it in the sock that you get to put on in first <laughs> class on the on Delta. Yeah, in the little blue socks. I that know you, the blue socks. Hell yeah, you put them on, Edge. Of course, you be putting them on them feet. I like the blue socks. So he put money in that blue sock, <laughs> and he gave it to me twice. One year in a shirt, he wrapped the shirt up. I think Renee from GU uh, from G Unit office. He sent me within the shirt the money. And then another year, 50 just put it in my hand and said, you know, take care of the family, yo. And so people do need to hear those stories. He's so giving that when he that when he comes down well, and, and come, if you don't But you give, also paid him back. <laughs> yeah, I don't play that. I don't play around with that. I paid Tyler back. Paulette and Denzel gave me $1,500 when I was living in the car to make sure that the car wasn't repoed that I was living in. Wow. Like, I don't, that's a lot, man, for people to. For people to let you come in their house and eat dinner is a lot, let alone give you money. money. To me, to me, it's a lot. Have you done that for anybody else? Yeah, come on, man. People hit, have hit you? Cool. Actors? Or just... Yeah, yeah. everybody. Family, actors. Yeah, you got to give money. You got to... I mean, point. family is one thing, right? But like a struggling, a coming up sure. actor that's for sure. like... I absolutely have. Paid it forward, yeah, right? It's like yeah, paying yeah. it forward. I really don't expect it back. And nor did 50, nor did Denzel, nor did Tyler. But isn't that a beautiful thing when they don't expect it and you go here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's super cool. That's really great. Oh, what that a they nice gave it to me. Oh, fifty. Fifty. You know? Oh, fifty. <laughs> the sensitive side, the sweet Which side. Which is a of big, 50. it's a big side of it. That's a great story. Yeah. That's a great story. I gave it to you, Ange. Thank you, you my love. You got it exclusive, Mama. I love that. Um. All right. So let's talk about the. Po so wait, he did the podcast. So he did the podcast. So Mario has a new podcast, everybody, po and it. Poetics, yeah. which is on Luminary, which is a new podcast network. Got it. The poet side of me, Angie, that you were very familiar with for such a long time. Uh -huh. The brother to my right, be, you know, to your left being Alex Nago, he was actually a PA on Power. He was a he was a production assistant who would receive me every morning on Power for two seasons. Good morning, oh, what can I get you? He was a PA for me and 50, for Naturi, for Leela, for Joseph. And so, and everybody else who followed. Alex came to me. Some time, ago, some time ago, I was already doing music at the time, but he was like, oh, you're this poet at the world who, 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 who know you as a poet. They need the rest of the people around them in terms of their own living rooms to know equally as much as they know you're a poet. They need their friends, their family to know this side of you. Uh -huh. So he said, as power, you know, is at its height, because we were in season four and I was incarcerated, Ghost was incarcerated. He, was, they, they, he and, and his Childhood best friend and Elliot, who's here with us to, today as well, and then their big brother of sorts, Dan Stewart. They said, "Why don't we do a show, not necessarily a podcast, but a show, where basically we use poetry 
and we bring it to hip hop artists and we make them come to our living room, so to speak, and we make them do a poem. And then from that poem, we ask what the poem was about. And then we go into the journey of their life and going back to the fact that the power of pen, let Gil Scott Heron tell it, uh-huh. that that will be the thing that the revolution is televised in, right? The pen. Right. It won't be televised literally. It will be that of a pen. And I'm being poetic and saying that which they meant. But then that turned into basically the reality that I didn't know, Angie, which is in my mind, I grew up listening to radio and then satellite radio ultimately, but I didn't realize that. So that to me is the podcast, what you do, Angie. Mm-hmm. But I didn't realize the new spectrum, the new format, the new paradigm of podcasts and that young people were listening to them at the addictive pace and, and way that they were. And so they told me, why don't we start that show idea that would have been an MTV type of show? Why don't we streamline it and make it why don't we podcast. macro, why don't we micro the macro of the show and make it a podcast? And so we basically bring in hip hop artists, legends, soon to be legends. I heard and Casanova's newcomers. clip. I heard, because like you make everybody do a poem, right? They when start they out with a poem and then they talk about their journey. Obviously, Casanova has such an interesting journey. I love him. Oh, he's phenomenal. He's so great. And he and I met each other yeah. under tense circumstances. What do you mean? He pushed up. What happened? Yeah, it was. A, no, he yeah. was aggressive. He has a very aggressive. We were tone. both aggressive. He has a very I don't aggressive know. tone I, about I was, his voice. I was. I was react. I was an actor is but a react reactor, right? An actor is but a reactor, and 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 you know. You were reacting to what you thought he was bringing you. He he was bringing it, but I. But, but what I, did he want? And then fifty, you know, and then fifty texted me and was like, "Yo, oh," and I said, "Yep, all good, all good," and I was like, "Okay, so, so Kaz really looks up to fifty as does Omari, obviously, and." And all three of us, obviously, now at this point, really respect each other. So I think that the way we met each other is the way that strong, smart women often talk about men who are strong and smart Mm -hmm. and alpha meeting each other, which is we can almost take each other's heads off and then go, cool, you want to drink? Yeah. (laughs) So the way we met each other wasn't literally doing that, but we definitely met each other. He said it. He has a post where he says, oh, and I met each other on an elevator and it could have gone wrong. It could have been of dissension, figuratively speaking, Mm -hmm. but we ascended. And we became super respectful of each other. Dave East was there that night. You, you, uh, you Lenny, can't just Lenny leave S. S. was there. That you was can't it. just leave that me it. that story. That was it. How does that happen in an elevator so fast? The elevator ride is no longer, no longer. I think than he a couple felt. I, I think he felt I disrespected him, and I got why he felt that. And I asked him. Now in life, I said, I just said, Kaz, I apologize for not knowing at the time your music. He said it wasn't even that. though. you actually shouldn't have known my music at that point. But you know. I guess he he said it in the podcast. He goes in that in that episode. He goes, "Oh, I, I really respect you a lot." And if that's if that speaks to to the reality of what he was meeting, and she was meeting a guy that he really respected, but I wasn't as familiar with him. Mm-hmm. And so that makes sense to me. We both got raspy voices. His is obviously a lot huskier. We His both is so are, husky. We both are alpha men, and yeah. uh, and, he, and we're both teddy bears, you know? He's a passionate cat, and I love him to death, and he knows it. Yeah. I, I'm forever indebted to the man that I'm meeting at this point called Casanova, Caswell Sr., and shout-outs to, to the cat that he is. You said you love him, and I echo your sentiment 30 times. Yeah, he's very likable, and he does a... Um and I liked his poem on the show. He like opened dope. up. That yeah, he dope. talked about his son, which I didn't realize he had a kid with autism, and he shared about that and his. And we try to go there and... on the podcast. I just, I really want. I want Angie Martinez to come on. I want <gasps> Sway to come on. I, I have to e- write a poem. I haven't wrote a poem yeah. in a very long time. And I, and I want you guys to come. On. Yeah, but you're a poet. I want you guys to come on and really, you know, Jen said it today. My musical publicist, you're like, you know what, oh. These these people that are behind the scenes of hip hop, you're you're behind the scenes, but it's like it's Angie Martinez. You're an icon, and, and oh, I was well, is, is this you making? Is dollar. this you inviting me? Yeah, you're inviting me. Nigga, to the are show? you crazy? I'm coming. Okay, because it's a tri- <laughs> Then yes. It's, then it... my answer is yes. I would love to be Thank on the you, show. Angie. I'm very humble. Who has had the best poem so far? <sighs> it's hard to say. I know Fifty probably had a good poem. It was dope. I loved. I Dave, loved Dave, 50's Dave verse. was crazy. Dave was crazy because he sat down and oh, just Dave kinda, East. It was crazy. Yeah. you know his pen. Yeah, um, he wrote it right there. Yeah, we kind of. Yeah, <laughs> he wrote it right there. Uh, you know what? I was really, really impressed with Casanova being that open and vulnerable. Casanova's like, was dope. Do, I heard his. He doesn't do poetry. Like he, he said, "Oh, I, and but then he rap text, is like poetry. I, I know it's just I slowed know, up, but a I little t- more. Yeah." Fuller, word, that's little, what it is. Yeah, but he hit me back and he was like, yo, oh, you did something for me, bro. And and I actually put that poem to a beat and I created a song out of that. And so that's the greatest. Wow, compliment. I love that's that. So cool. 
That's all we want. We just all right, really I'm gonna want people to pen, be able I'm to gonna get my pen game. Get it, back ass. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, can we do the podcast right now? Could I do an episode on Power No, I'm not prepared. I need to mentally. 0.1. I need to Amazing. mentally. Yo, I cannot do a podcast right now. No. I'm mobile, homie. No, no. You can't, you can't go without shouting out Black <laughs> Clef. His poem. Yo, Clef. Cle- well, first of all, you got to shout out that Clef was the first episode. The first episode. That's pretty good. You know how hard that is? Yeah. yeah. And we like, you know, it was a new concept. Right? I mean, the, so the Haitian king. The bar so high. Just the Haitian king. Just yeah. shout outs to Haiti and. Shout outs to Clef and just Clef. what he's meant to hip hop and what he's meant to music. I've said it. I said it to the Alex and Elliot. They're younger than me, and I keep going. Look, we've had them. We've had Prince and we've had Michael, and we and we've had Raphael Sadiq. We're talking about musical giants in terms of musicality. I got to be honest. Clef is right there in that conversation. I always say this about Clef. He is Clef. a musical genius. He could perform anywhere. You could like never have heard of Clef and don't know his music, and he will perform and entertain the hell out of you. Yeah. Like He could perform for any crowd. Stevie Wonder's like that, Any country, right? any. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Yeah, that's when you know you have talent. Uh, he, the talent yeah, is an performer. understatement. Shout out to Clef. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, then it's a deal. So you come. So I will see you on your podcast. You're I'm excited. Right, Absolutely. Angie. I need you. How do people see it? Um, I'm so hear it. It's audio, but it's on Luminary. Mm hmm. And you can get the Luminary app on iTunes, mm-hmm. download that, right? Mm-hmm. And if you go to, if you click the link in my bio, then you as, a, actually get three months free. Oh, that's nice. Free is good. Free is always good. Yeah. Gratis. In your Instagram bio? Yes, in oh, my per- Instagram. Perfect. At, at Omari Hardwick Official. For all those that have asked me, yo, how many Instagrams you got? It's just, it's only one. That's it. <laughs> if, they link, if they click on that one, if they click on another one, they ain't getting that free all three right. months. But if you click on mine, yes. Link in bio. Link in bio. Love that. And when do we see season six? six? Um, o- six. August the 25th. August 25th. Power season six, the finale season. Is there anything you can tell us before you go? Shit is uncomfortable. <laughs> There it is. Omari Hardwick, everybody. It's 5105.1. Thank you, Angie. Thank you. (laughs)